Was there a mystery behind what just happened in Israel, behind Gaza, Hamas? Was it foretold? Was it part of something ancient? Does it have to do with the end times? Is Hamas in the Bible? Is there an ancient mystery that revealed it, could have told us it would happen and the time it would happen? This is what this video is gonna reveal. And I'm gonna say this at the start. The night before it all began, I was speaking here at Beth Israel, the congregation I lead in Wayne, New Jersey. And I was led to open up one of the mysteries revealed in the book that I just released this September, one month before, the Josiah Manifesto, subtitled The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. The mystery I shared contained not only what would happen, but when it would happen. And then it happened right after it. I'll share exactly what that mystery is in this message. This is Jonathan Cohn. People have been asking me to speak on what happened. I've been traveling, so I couldn't do it, but you asked for it, so you'll get it. We are not to be against any people. The ministry here, Hope of the World, has compassion projects for the people of Israel and also for the needy of the Arab peoples. But we also have to stand against what is evil. On the morning of the first Sabbath of October, while Israelis ready to celebrate the finale of their autumn holy days, Simchat Torah, which means the joy of God's law, it was set to be one of the most joyous celebrations of the Hebrew year. Terror struck the land and the people of Israel, a terror unlike any other that had struck Israel in half a century, and by another reckoning, unlike any that had ever happened to the nation. What would be the worst massacre of Jewish people since Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust? The enemy entered the land by sea, by air, from the Gaza Strip, thousands of rockets fired into the dwellings of the Israelis, bringing destruction as Islamic gunmen broke through into Israeli territory, coming in by vans, foot, motorcycle, by boat, by paragliders, and carrying machine guns. They entered into Israeli towns, streets, farms, kibbutzes, villages. They found young families in their beds and murdered them. Fathers and mothers, children, old men and women, the most young and innocent. Those they didn't murder, they took away with them, bound as hostages. They terrorized them, brutalized them, raped them. Among them were those who had survived the Holocaust. Young men and women at a party held in the name of peace were abducted, brutalized, murdered. Peace activists were murdered. The lifeless body of a mother of an infant was spat upon and paraded around the city to cheers and joy. Young Israeli families expecting to wake up to a Saturday of rest, celebration and joy woke up instead to terror that they had never fathomed, entering into their lives and their bedrooms. In one village, they murdered 40 babies. Not content with murdering them, they chopped off their heads. They killed children in front of their parents. They burned alive innocent people. Hearing the news of what happened, Islamic crowds in the Gaza Strip erupted in celebration and joy, singing for joy, dancing for joy. So Islamic crowds celebrated and shouted for joy in the West Bank, in Europe, in New York. They celebrated in Harvard University and colleges throughout the West. On the day of Simchat Torah, the joy of God's law, when Israel was to rejoice, Israel's enemies were the ones rejoicing and rejoicing in bloodshed, terrorism, savagery, and murder. Let's go behind it. Those rejoicing in the bloodshed did so in the name of Palestine. They say the land of Israel is Palestine. The Jews occupy it and need to be driven out of the land or murdered out of the land. What is the name Palestine? It comes from the Romans, Palestina. The Romans destroyed the ancient nation of Israel or Judea, slaughtered countless numbers of Jewish people, took others captive into exile, and in order to erase the name and memory of Israel, they renamed the land and they renamed it after Israel's ancient enemies who were called the Pilashtim or the Philistines. The Philistines were an ancient brutal people. Goliath was one of them. The word Palestinian, what does it mean? It actually means Philistine. The word Palestine actually means the land of the Philistines. God loves all people, but it's clear in the scriptures that he gave the land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their children, the children of Israel. The word Palestine or Palestina is part of a war against the promise that God gave and the will of God. To use the word Palestine to speak of the land of Israel is to take part in a war that goes against the word and promise and will of God. What about Gaza? The Gaza Strip, is there anything behind it? There is, something ancient. The city of Gaza and the Gaza Strip is in the Bible. Who lived there? The Philistines lived there. They particularly dwelt by the sea, the western coast of the land of Israel. 
Much of their headquarters match up with the Gaza Strip and its surroundings. The Gaza Strip were the headquarters of the enemies of Israel in ancient times. So it is again. What we were witnessing in the news was part of an ancient war. In ancient times, the Philistines launched attacks on the people of Israel. They plotted invasions. They carried out death and destruction from the Gaza Strip. So it happened again, the replaying of an ancient war. In ancient times, when Israel was struck or weakened, the people of Gaza or the coastal strip of the Philistine area would rejoice in celebrations. Well, they did it again. They rejoiced at what they saw as the weakening of Israel. They rejoiced over the killing of Israelis and the shedding of blood. Did they do so intentionally replaying what took place in ancient times? No, they did it unaware of the ancient act. King David himself spoke of it. When the Philistines killed the Israeli king Saul and his son Jonathan in battle, David mourned over it and he said this. He said, tell it not in Gath, one of the Philistine city, the region of Gaza. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, another city in the region of Gaza. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will celebrate. So too God, through the prophet Isaiah, tells the Philistines of the Gaza Strip and its surroundings who would celebrate over Israeli deaths, in this case, the death of the Israeli king, King Ahaz, do not rejoice, Philistia, or do not rejoice, Palestine, all of you, because the rod that struck you is broken. The Lord has founded Zion. It's all replay. Now you've heard of Israelis being abducted, humiliated, abused, wounded, taken captive, hostage into the city of Gaza and held there. Well, there was an Israeli who was also wounded, humiliated, abused, taken captive into the city of Gaza. His name was Samson, and the end result was that Gaza was left in the ruins of its temple. To invade the homes of families asleep, to murder children in front of their parents, to kill their babies in their cribs, to behead them, what is that? That is demonic. It's the fruit of an evil, demonic mindset and a spirit that celebrates bloodshed and destruction of the innocent. This is the demonic seed that's been germinating in Islamic radicalism, into which children, as in Gaza, are indoctrinated from their youth and told that it's a glorious thing to kill a Jewish person. They point to a verse in the Quran about killing Jews and believe it's a divine thing. It wasn't just that the people of Gaza celebrated, Students at our elite Ivy League colleges in the West, such as Harvard, they also celebrated. Chapters of BLM, Black Lives Matter, cheered on the killing and the bloodshed, the decapitation of children. One chapter actually had a picture in which they glorified a terrorist paragliding into Israel to murder innocent men, women, and children with machine guns. But they said that they were for the destruction of Israel from the beginning. And, and the, that same organization also said it was for the destruction of the family. Hollywood celebrities that threw in their enthusiastic support for BLM could not even throw a crumb of support to the fathers and mothers and children who were slaughtered in their home. Jew hatred, like evil, is a sickness. It transcends politics, the left or the right. There were extreme right-wing groups as well that also blamed Israel, but overwhelmingly it came from the left. And the fact is that anti-Semitism has now become a contagion, a sickness increasingly afflicted the mainstream left. And just as our mainstream left-wing news channels featured commentators who blamed the Israelis for the massacre of Israelis, most of academia grew strangely silent. Harvard University overwhelmingly saw support for the murder of the innocent. Most of corporate America grew strangely silent. Most of the woke of wokedom who would fly into a rage of condemnation at the slightest trace of what they would call microaggression fell strangely asleep from their state of wokeness. They couldn't think of a single word to condemn the murder of children. Those of you who have put your faith in the left, let this be a revelation to you and a wake up call uh, or a woke up call. And if those of the elite universities become the leaders of the America of the future or the West of the future, then fear what America or the West will become. And if, if these can shed the blood of the innocent in Israel, then they can shed the blood of the innocent in America or the West. A Democratic Congresswoman who condemns everything Israel does along with her squad was asked if she could condemn the decapitation of babies. She would not. She could not find it in herself to say that it might be wrong to cut off the head of an innocent baby. And you wondered how the Nazis perpetrated their atrocities and no one said anything or did anything. Well, you don't have to wonder anymore. 
And the Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe. The nations of the world had a part in helping this happen. They gave billions of dollars to Hamas, even America. Trump stopped it, Biden resumed it, and instead of putting the money into helping the city of Gaza, Hamas put it into missiles to destroy the Jewish people. But that is part of the charter of Hamas, of its existence. Specifically, it exists to kill the Jewish people of Israel, if not beyond. The tragedy was called Israel's 9-11. And in proportion to its population, it would be as if tens of thousands of Americans were killed in a single day. It was the same demonic spirit that was behind 9-11, the killing of men, women, and children. Now I'm gonna open up a mystery that joins together what happened in Israel, what happened in 9-11, an ancient mystery from The Harbinger. Now, if you've read that book, that's the first book I wrote, The Harbinger. You know the connection between 9-11 and the scripture verse, Isaiah 9-10. Isaiah 9.10 speaks of an enemy strike on the land, an enemy incursion, an invasion causing destruction on the land. And though it speaks about what happened to ancient Israel, there's a mystery that links it to 9.11. Now, I had no idea when I wrote The Harbinger that in the one-year Bible, the Bible that has a scripture passage appointed for every day of the year, it contains something uncanny. If you open it up to Isaiah 9.10, the Harbinger scripture, about that first attack of the enemy, the enemy strike on the land, on the top of the page, you'll see a date for which the scripture was appointed. What's the date? September 11th. The mystery of the harbinger was in the one-year Bible and the one-year Bible came out years before 9-11 in the 1980s. Yet it appoints the scripture about the enemy attack for September 11th. So every September 11th, before the attack, Christians were opening up their Bibles to Isaiah 9:10 about the enemy strike on the land appointed for September 11th. But there was another scripture in the one-year Bible also appointed for September 11th because they also add a psalm and a proverb. The psalm appointed for 9-11 was Psalm 55. And it's striking because Psalm 55 also speaks of an attack by an enemy. It has the word terror in it and death. Now listen to verses 9 and 11 appointed for 9-11. Verse 9, I've seen violence and conflict in the city. Now verse 11, destructive forces, forces of destruction are at work in the midst of the city all marked for 9-11, but it goes deeper. See, when it says I've seen violence and conflict in the city, the word violence in the original language, the Hebrew, has more than meets the eye. It's a word that exists both in Hebrew and in Arabic. And it's a word that, that has an, an, an ancient meaning in Hebrew and a modern meaning in Arabic. In ancient Hebrew, the word means violence, evil, violation, wrong, and destruction. And that was all marked for 9-11, and that's also what happened in Israel. But the word has a different meaning in Arabic. In Arabic, the same word means zeal, fervor, fire, and fanaticism. That's exactly what happened on 9-11. That's exactly what happened in Israel. Evil and destruction and fanaticism. And so it was also marked by Hamas for that Sabbath day in Israel. But what exactly is that word that occurs in Psalm 55? The actual ancient Hebrew word, listen, is the word Hamas. The word Hamas is in the Bible. In Arabic, fire and fanaticism. In Hebrew, violence, evil, and destruction appointed for 9-11. And it's what was behind what happened in Israel on that Sabbath weekend. Hamas, the actual organization of Hamas centered in Gaza. And that means in Hebrew, violence, evil, and destruction. So the organization that was linked to what happened in Israel was that. So let me show you other appearances of the word Hamas in the Bible. Psalm 74, for the dark places of the earth are full of the dwelling of Hamas. Ezekiel 7, Hamas has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Ezekiel 7 also, the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of Hamas. Psalm 140, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the man of Hamas who has purposed to overthrow my goings. What else did the Bible say about what happened? And what does this have to do with end time prophecy? And what about the mystery that foretold the day it happened? We'll get to that. Psalm 83 says this, it speaks to God. It says, your enemies make an uproar and those who hate you have exalted themselves. They, they make shrewd plans against your people and they conspire together against your favored ones. They have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation so that the name of Israel will no longer be remembered. Well, that's exactly what happened. They conspire together, it goes on, with one mind. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, 
Gebel, Ammon, and Amalek. Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also joined them. Amazing because the people it speaks of almost 3,000 years ago are linked to these very things in our day. It includes Philistia, that's Palestine. Very centrally, that's the Gaza Strip with the inhabitants of Tyre. That's Lebanon, the headquarters of Hezbollah. That is allied, a terror group allied with Hamas and waiting on the north border to fire missiles down at Israel as they all seek Israel's destruction. Moab and Ammon, that's the children of Edom, the east and the south, who are also largely allied with the others. And Assyria, interesting because there's only one nation in the world, in the modern world, whose name comes from Assyria. That's Syria. And it's also waiting from the east to destroy Israel. Now, beyond the question of whether this could be prophesying a current situation, the amazing thing is what it speaks of is in effect is now in place. Then there's the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39 of a coming war to take place in the last days of, of the nations gathered against the resurrected reborn nation of Israel. And though there's debate about some of the nations mentioned, it clearly mentions the land of Turkey and Turkey just happens to be an enemy of Israel right now. Another nation it clearly mentions is Iran. And so it happens that Iran is also Israel's deadly arch enemy that cheered on the massacres, is threatening to bring destruction now to the nation of Israel. Interesting as well as Hamas smuggles in weapons with which to strike Israel from Iran and from the Sudan, which is linked to Cush, which is one of the nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And from Libya, another one of the nations also that is linked to the prophecy. Could this present conflict lead to a greater conflict, a war and lead directly in, or ultimately in time to the war prophesied in Ezekiel? It could, but now another mystery. In the book of Daniel, it is written that the prophet was praying concerning the nation of Israel. And after many days, he's visited by an angel who tells him that he was delayed in coming to him because of the Sar Paris or the prince or principality of Persia. Now the angel came to tell Daniel about what would happen to the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, in the last days. But this principality, which is demonic, came against the purposes of God for the nation of Israel. But spirits don't die. And this spirit is identified as the spirit of Persia. Persia still exists. It is called Iran. So in modern terms, it is the spirit of Iran. It's identified as a spirit that seeks to stop the purposes of God for Israel. Well, it's amazing because it's this very nation that has now become Israel's dangerous arch enemy and chants death to Israel, seeks nuclear power and seeks Israel's destruction. And whatever role it had in this invasion, this massacre of Israel, Iran has been the chief sponsor of Hamas in Gaza, the chief funder of the organization that has assembled thousands of missiles and terrorists to destroy the nation of Israel. That Hamas was even in a position to do what it just did is linked to Iran. And the president of the United States apparently helped the prince of Persia in its work by releasing billions of dollars of funds to Iran and did so on the anniversary of 9-11. And now the mystery that foretold what happened and when it would take place. It was the night before the invasion. It was Friday night. I was leading the Friday night worship service here at Beth Israel in New Jersey. And that whole night I was led to open up and focus on one of the mysteries in the book I had just released in September, 30 days before the attack. This is what it looks like. It's called the Josiah Manifesto. It speaks both of ancient mysteries and their replaying in modern times. So the subtitle, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. And what I was led to open up that night before everything happened was the mystery of the 50th year. And the mystery of the 50th year, as in the Jubilee year, is linked to return. And what happens in the 50th year or the 50th anniversary parallels what happened in the 50th year before it. It parallels what happened 50 years before it. It repeats it or answers it or fulfills it or corresponds to it. Now, the mystery is especially connected to the nation of Israel, but it also affects the entire world. Israel's rebirth is linked to the Jubilean or 50th year. This mystery determined the uncovering of the ancient city of Jerusalem. It determined the timing of the First World War. It, in fact, it determined two major wars of the modern age. It determined the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the actions of the British Empire, the voting of the United Nations, and even the actions of American presidents, as in President Trump. Now, I wrote of these things also in the Oracle, but in the Josiah Manifesto, I wrote of the mystery's most recent manifestations and to America and the world. Namely, that this mystery has actually affected the life of everybody watching this video. 
It determined the year that COVID would strike the world and the exact time, the exact month, the exact week, and the exact day it would officially enter into American soil. It determined a traumatic event involving the Supreme Court. It determined the day that the media said changed everybody's life in America and many outside of America. It even determined the ending or the collapse of the plague known as COVID. And I was led to share it all. And, and I brought it up to the present day on that Friday night, to the 50 year cycle of 1970 to 2020, and up to the, the 50 year cycle connecting the events of 1973 to 2023. That was Friday night. And here's the thing. The night I shared about the mystery of the 50th year, the 50th anniversary, turned out was the 50th year and the 50th anniversary exactly to the day of a calamitous event that took place in 1973. That event was the next event in this prophetic mystery. It was the Yom Kippur War. I shared all of this on Friday night, October 6, 2023, exactly 50 years to the start of that war. And before that night was over in the West, the parallel event, the matching corresponding event of this mystery was set in motion in Israel. In the 50th year comes the event that parallels what happened 50 years before. What happened 50 years before? The Yom Kippur War was a massive ground invasion on Israeli soil. The Hamas attack 50 years later was a massive ground invasion on Israeli soil. The first such one in 50 years since the Yom Kippur War. The Yom Kippur War was a surprise attack. It caught Israeli intelligence off guard. The Hamas invasion 50 years later was a surprise attack catching Israeli intelligence also off guard. The Yom Kippur War began on a Saturday. The Hamas invasion began on a Saturday. The Yom Kippur War began on a Sabbath, the first Sabbath of October. The Hamas invasion began on a Sabbath, the first Sabbath of October, 50 years later to the Sabbath, the exact Sabbath. The Yom Kippur War was launched on a Hebrew Holy Day. 50 years later, the Hamas invasion was launched on a Hebrew Holy Day. The Yom Kippur War shook the nation of Israel. The Hamas invasion shook the nation of Israel exactly 50 years later. God used the Jubilee to restore and bring about the rebirth of the nation of Israel. But the Bible speaks of the forces of darkness, of evil in the spiritual realm. Rulers, principalities that will seek the destruction of God's purposes, in this case, the destruction of Israel. And to take the things of God that are for good and use them for destruction. So on the first Sabbath of October, 2023, the forces of darkness used the same ancient pattern of redemption, the 50 year mystery used by God to restore Israel to bring about destruction. What does this all reveal? The Bible says that in the last days, the Jewish people will return to Israel and become a nation again. So it's all happened. It says that Israel will be the center of controversy. And so Israel is once again in the center of the news and controversy. World War II is no longer a news story. The Cold War is not a news story. The Reagan years, Clinton years, Obama years, not the story, but Israel is still the story and the same controversy that it was before. The Bible says it would be. What else does it reveal? There is a war against the existence of the Jewish people. It isn't natural. It transcends time and space. You can find the hatred of the Jewish people and Israel in Europe, Asia, Africa, Latin America, America, everywhere. Even when there are no Jewish people, you find the hatred of the Jewish people. You find it in the modern world. You find it in the ancient world. You find it in the Middle Ages. And everybody gives a different reason because it's not about the reason. It's not natural. It's supernatural. It's spiritual. It's demonic. It's satanic. The Bible says that God is real and that the enemy of God, known in Hebrew as Satan or Satan, is also real. And so as Israel is a sign that God is real, God exists, the hatred and fury and age old war against Israel is a sign that the enemy of God, the enemy of Israel is also real. What those Hamas terrorists did to those families wasn't natural, it was satanic. It was reminiscent of the Nazi death squads that would go house to house looking for Jews and rounding up Jewish families to slaughter them. It's no accident. The same spirit that impelled them to do what they did impelled the Nazis to do what they did. The same satanic fury. Israel is a physical nation and has to fight in the physical to stay alive. And we who are of Messiah are of a spiritual nation. 
and must fight in the spirit against spiritual evil. We must not accept any darkness, any bondage in the world or in our lives, but resist it and fight it. What happened in Israel is part also of a 2000 year old prophecy of the Messiah. The Jewish people have been waiting for the Messiah for 2000 years, but what if the Jewish Messiah already came and most of them missed it? Then they would become like sheep without their shepherd. And when the wolves came to the flock, they would be helpless. When Messiah, Yeshua, known as Jesus, gazed out at Jerusalem, he wept and he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he said, your peace is hidden, or in Hebrew, your shalom is hidden from you, the things that make for your peace, but now it's hidden from you. He said that 2,000 years ago, and for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have been seeking for peace, and no matter what they do, they can't find it. And when it looks like they're about to have peace, as it did with the peace talks, then something happens to take it away. Because this one, Yeshua, just happens to be their Messiah. He's their Prince of Peace. And without him, there is no peace. Only when they turn to him, who is the hope of Israel, will they find their shalom, their peace. And that's not just true for the Jewish people. It's true for all of us. Only in him, only in his will, can you find your peace. Now, I told you the word Hamas was in the Bible, meaning evil, death, destruction, and we're to pray for all people involved. We have to pray for God's ancient people, and we have to pray for their cousins, the Arab peoples as well, and for all to come out of the darkness to turn from evil and to come to salvation. But we also have to stand up against evil. Listen to what else the Bible says about Hamas, the word Hamas. Ezekiel 46, thus says the Lord God, let it suffice you, O leaders of Israel, remove Hamas and execute justice. Isaiah 60, and Hamas shall no longer be heard in your land, not wasting or destruction in your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and you will call your gates praise. What we have just witnessed in the land of Israel is part of an ancient war and ancient mystery playing out in modern times before our eyes. What will happen to Israel? In the book of Jeremiah, God said this concerning the Jewish people. This is what the Lord says, he who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If this fixed order should depart from me, says the Lord, then the descendants or the children of Israel will also cease to be a nation before me. What is God saying? He's saying, as long as the sun and stars of heaven remain in the sky, so long as the, the order of the cosmos is in place, the Jewish people will remain a nation before him. This was said two and a half thousand years ago. The enemy has raged against the children of Israel, the Jewish people, for thousands of years. He raged against them in ancient times. He raged against them in medieval times. He raged against them in modern times. And the most amazing thing is not that all hell was raging against them. The miracle is that they're still here. They live. They should not be alive. Go to the great museums of the world and see the runes of the Assyrians and the Hittites and the Amorites, all the peoples who once walked the earth were the children of Israel, the Jewish people. And that's all that's left, runes in museums. But in those same museums, you'll see actual children of Israel alive, walking the halls, not made of stone or clay, but living flesh and blood people. Why? Because God said so. The enemy has raged for ages to wipe them off the face of the earth. The pharaohs tried to destroy them. Assyria tried to wipe them out. Babylon tried to smash them. Rome tried to eliminate them. The Nazis tried to annihilate them. The Soviet Union tried to crush them. Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, the mullahs of Iran, all the terrorists of the world have tried to destroy them from the face of the earth. But the pharaohs are gone. Assyria has crumbled, Babylon has fallen, Rome is no more, the Nazis have been wiped out, the Soviet Union has collapsed, the terrorists will be no more, they've all fallen, but, 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 the nation of Israel lives, Am Yisrael Chai, the nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives, and the Messiah of Israel lives, and the Word of Israel lives, and the hope of Israel lives, and you who follow the God of Israel, you will live. He who keeps Israel will keep you, and the enemy will be gone, and you will prevail, and no more shall destruction be heard in your land. You will call your wall salvation and your gates praise in the name above every name that is named Yeshua HaMashiach, the light of the world, the Lion of Judah, and the hope of his people Israel. Amen.
now to receive these messages so you don't miss them. In the future, hit subscribe and like and pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for God's redemption in all these things. And if you can help by sending help to those in need, do so. The ministry I lead here is Hope of the World. It helps the most needy of the world and it's at hopeoftheworld.org. The books I mentioned are the Josiah Manifesto, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times, which just came out and may reveal even more of what's yet to come and the Oracle the ancient mystery. They're all available everywhere. Until next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, the God of Israel lives. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Shalom. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.